we'll be sharing on the topic of wisdom which is one of the eight aspects of god the theme which we have been focusing on and uh, let's actually begin with a prayer but this time i thought for a prayer why not i read a prayer demand from whispers from eternity so this is a demand by this is a demand for the pearls of wisdom obtained in the sea of meditation so let's center ourselves if you want you can close your eyes and let's pray to divine mother divine father with these words which paramhansa yogananda ji gave us divine father teach me to dive deep for the pearls of thy wisdom in the ocean of meditation teach me to plunge headlong protected in the diving suit of conscience that the sharks of passion may not destroy me if by one or two divings i find not thy wisdom pearls let me not call the sea of meditation devoid of any pearl of thy wisdom teach me rather to find fault with my own diving teach me to dive again and again in meditation deeper and deeper always until i find thine immortal pearls of wisdom and of joy divine just a slight detour um, because i read something from this post from eternity if you haven't read this book or not uh, you know had a chance to tune into this book recently do tune into it there are some very beautiful prayer demands with which yogananda ji wrote this prayer demands for joy for love for devotion prayer to specific saints and it's just very beautiful and you can just take one prayer demand and really meditate on it and go over it over and over again so now coming back to the topic which is on wisdom and i found it very interesting in this prayer demand that yogananda ji ended the prayer demand with you know asking for the pearls of wisdom and joy divine and it made me think that first of all i'll address on thinking it's wisdom is not thinking really but i still thought because i'm not yet fully wise you might say but anyways it made me think that these eight manifestations of god these eight aspects of god which we have been tuning into they are not separate as we can sometimes think of it to be that oh this is wisdom i tune in more to wisdom oh i yes it's true some of us tune in more to joy some more to wisdom some more to the own vibration to sound to light but they are at the end of the day from one source which is god and when one increases it does not it means that other aspects also increases in our life that when we become more wise it's not that we are going to be sad um, i'll read this from one of swami ji's readings also but it also results in a mutually uh, you could say i don't know if you could say it's not mutually exclusive they actually support one another that you're also joyful when you're wise when you're joyful you also get some wisdom out of it and who says that i mean the greatest joy is or the greatest wisdom is to know that the joy true joy lies in god alone so again i'm just trying to say that there's no differentiation between one or the other so when we say wisdom it's not like oh this is wisdom this is joy this is light it's all one and the same but again since we live in this world there are these outward manifestations which we happen to tune into and now for now we are tuning into the aspect of wisdom now what is wisdom and what is not if we have been on the spiritual path we certainly know that it is not about thinking it is not about reasoning it is not about you know telling that this is a this is b this is c and just knowing it uh, knowing the scriptures front and back left and right up and down absolutely not of course we know all of that but then what is true wisdom we might ask well let's take the example of any school or anything which people receive training for let's say it's a music school or an art school and there is a school which for every subject in life where people want to become proficient and everyone basically in that class let's say there are 20 students everyone receives the same training 
but is it not true that not everyone is going to be a proficient musician or a proficient artist or a painter or even in the case of uh, the traditional uh, schooling you might say accountancy or medicine or engineering not everyone turns out to be the best in their field why is that so because a lot of it to do in any field of life and especially when it comes to spiritual life is not something which can be learned outwardly there is a lot of inner attunement which is needed to the subject and in our case inner attunement with god and gurus there are many gurus swami ji used to say who are monis who don't even say a word to their disciples and we might wonder how are they being guided how are they being led but the goal of a guru is to guide the disciple inwardly of course he gives outward examples he gives outward teachings he you might we all share stories very often uh, on the path and we share stories of yogananda ji swami ji but true spiritual teaching or we could say true spiritual knowing comes from the inside and it is that inside which we really want to focus on when we talk about wisdom wisdom and intuition at least for me they go very much hand in hand and it is the soul guidance which we are tuning into how can we do that well in this prayer demand we clearly read demands for the pearl of wisdom obtained in the sea of meditation and meditation is extremely important for that why because generally in our life we are intellect or in my case the hyper intellect is always active and it's always thinking it's always rationalizing but that is not wisdom in meditation what we are trying to do is let's say it's night and there's a lake and there's a sun up there and if there are ripples on this lake up just if we throw a stone uh, in that lake you will see there are circles there'll be ripples and there'll be disturbances and we can't see the reflection of that moon light on this lake on this body of water on the surface and what are we trying to do in meditation we are trying to still this lake or you could say still these restless thoughts and by doing that what happens we are able to perceive that reflection exactly as it is i loved it how yogananda ji put it in this prayer demand he said teach me to plunge headlong protected in the diving suit of conscience that the sharks of passion may not destroy me and these ripples are those passions those restless thoughts those desires and what we are really trying to do is bring a sense of stillness of calmness one thing which i've seen sometimes not uh people who are very sincere on the path but sometimes i've seen you know people associate wisdom with this all knowing oh mere sath future mein kya hoga what will happen to me in future uh just knowing exactly what to do in the future and how things are going to turn out but that's not wisdom even saints even yogananda ji of course he knew what was going to happen but he was present and true wisdom is knowing exactly how to deter how to move now and it is from inward guidance we know many stories of yogananda ji and you we might say that oh how clever he could be that in this exact situation he gave this appropriate response or did this appropriate thing but it was not from the intellect which he was doing that it really or any great saint for that matter the feel guided inwardly that okay in this case there's need to be firm in this case then there's need to be completely withdrawn in this case there is probably need to show power and be fierce and how can we tread with that in life that is by tuning into that inner guidance and life is always going to spring upon us variety of surprises challenges situations and how would we know to deal with them not by the intellect not by reasoning i have spent hours sometimes at least in this lifetime in my meditation trying to figure things out in my meditation that oh, if i do this or if i could have given this response or if i could have done that and it is really a waste of time the best answer is really to calm the feelings calm the emotion 
calm those restless thoughts and just make it very still and in one way we might say in true wisdom we are able to discriminate things and see things exactly the way they are letting go of the surface and we are able to perceive things exactly as they are and so now with that i would like to read a few things uh, which swami kriyananda ji wrote i was planning to read something from uh, his affirmations for self healing but before that i would like to read um, something he wrote uh, from his book rays of the same light and he said uh, this is on the topic of how can we achieve the highest wisdom and he ends with this um, words he says the spiritual aspirant can receive god truly in himself who practices attachment to him meaning to the divine to god instead of to the world who lovingly worships him as a means of driving out of the heart all worldly infatuation who holds fast to an attitude of mental openness and humility in which soil alone discrimination wisdom or discernment can flourish who invites god's light into the darkest corners of his being and who above all surrenders to the infinite love and now i'll read from affirmations for self healing where swami swami ji writes about wisdom he says we often hear the expression sadder but wiser this is the mark of worldly wisdom which people equate with disillusionment indeed worldly hopes sooner or later all end in disappointment and sometimes in great sorrow worldly wisdom often wears the garb of sadness not so div- not so divine wisdom on the spiritual path the expression should be happier and wiser for true human wisdom means recognizing at last the path out of delusion and toward the light of truth divine wisdom is omniscience itself in such wisdom there is no shadow of sorrow only bliss absolute bliss infinite bliss eternal so i think i'll just end with this just trying to differentiate a little bit again with wisdom or just knowledge intellectual knowledge because often times yes we can read things yes we can know things that uh, you know yes i've read god is sachitananda god is ever new bliss it is one thing to read it and it is one thing to experience it even a little bliss bit of bliss can go a long way in that knowing that yes god is bliss as against reading a thousand pages that oh god is this or god is that sometimes you know i um, some of you might know brahmachari premdas and we like to joke with each other sometimes on some spiritual topics you might say and uh, one day uh, premdas was telling me about the difference of knowledge and wisdom now this is a funny one and don't uh, quote me on this but he said essentially that knowledge is knowing that tomato is a fruit but wisdom is knowing that not to put it in a fruit salad now it's a very silly example but coming to the point that they are very two different things knowledge and wisdom are extremely different we might know many things we might read the scriptures back forward and backward like i said up and down but how do we apply them how do we use them in our life we could very easily you know when someone is struggling in his life and in a uh, in a form of you know oh i can teach him this thing give him knowledge let's say if someone is going through a tragedy and to go up to him and tell him oh it's all karma don't worry it's all karma my goodness where, where is the point of wisdom where is the point of kindness wisdom is also appropriate wisdom knows exactly what to do when and a person who would say such a thing is not truly being wise he's actually being arrogant he's actually showing his knowledge not his wisdom in such a situation so again knowledge and wisdom are very different things and of course we may not know those higher states of consciousness right now but we have a certain sense of it and it's extremely important to because many times friends what can happen is by saying a thing over and over and over again we might think that we may know it 
Well, that's not the case. Just because I have said a hundred times, God is Satchitananda, I may not know that God is Satchitananda. But the more important part is, do I feel it? Do I feel it more and more and more? And can I experience it? Then, yes, I'm growing on the path. I'm growing in my wisdom. I'm growing in my experience. But otherwise, it really is not good to just quote things and move forward with that. With that, I would like to pass on to Brahmachari Ramesh, who will share more on this topic. Thank you, Vineet. So, it's an interesting uh, analogy. Uh, I will start with a story. Uh, it's a fun one. Paramans Yoganandaji used to, um, in early days, would take his disciples to the movies sometimes in theatres. And uh, in the most intense scene in the movie, when the disciples would be very engrossed in the scenes going on, emotions running high, he would tap on their back and show them the light coming from the projector and saying, look, it's all coming from the projector, it's not real. And that is an example of what true wisdom looks like. Seeing the projector behind all movie scenes in this whole world, but seeing the true reality behind all illusions, which is what true wisdom looks like. And that can come through intuition, through reason also, but pure calm reason, not the one guided by senses. So, uh, which is how we try to tune into the divine wisdom is, this is from the Bhagavad Gita, is we go beyond the five senses. Why beyond the five senses? Because they actually, uh, are, you can say, uh, soldiers who support Maya in keeping us trapped in this world, that we see everything, perceive everything which Maya wants us to see through the senses. So when we rely too much on them, we are actually fooling ourselves to the truth behind everything. So when we learn to control the sense, senses, we can experience divine wisdom and other aspects of uh, God as Vinit said, that all aspects of God help each other. And so joy helps wisdom, wisdom helps power, power helps peace, so, so on and so forth. So another thing which uh, Paramahansa Yoganandaji, Swami Kriyanandaji affirmed several times was pride, egotism is the death of wisdom. So that is another way we can try to tune into wisdom is the moment we realize that we think we know everything is the moment we are going away from true wisdom. And the moment we realize we don't really know anything and that we need to keep learning is the moment we can move forward towards true wisdom because then we are open to learning. And yes, it starts inwardly. Outwardly, again, the senses come in, the emotions come in, the restlessness comes in, and it distorts the picture. So, to remove that distortion going inward, we need deep meditation, which is what also when it said uh, that meditating deeply helps us to tune into intuition, which is the soul's power of knowing the truth, which is wisdom. And that is the true source of wisdom, intuition. And we don't just practice intuition at the end of a deep meditation. That is the time to train it. But once we get going, we have to try to tune in to it all the time. And when we do it all the time, it becomes easier and easier. Again, pride is the death of wisdom, so it becomes too easy. Something is wrong. And another story I would like to share. These are fun stories to emphasize another point which Vinith had mentioned. So I will read it. So this is Swami Kriyananda that he used to say this story. Sri Chaitanya, a youthful saint, lived several centuries ago in India and followed the path of bhakti, devotion. He moved from Bengal to Puri in the state of Orissa to be near Jagannath temple. There, Sarvabhama, an older man and a famous scholar, decided that this young man, though radiant, needed an intellectual foundation for his beliefs. Going to Chaitanya, he offered his instruction. Chaitanya said he is happy to learn. Sarvabhama, then reading from scripture, interpreted a single passage in <clears throat> 25 ways, an amazing feat. Chaitanya was impressed. After congratulating the older man, however, he said, 
let me see if I, I can come up with any more. We found 80 more meanings in the passage. Sabhama, faced with that accomplishment, became Chaitanya's disciple. So, it's a fun thing that even though Chaitanya was a practitioner of bhakti, and that doesn't really deal with wisdom directly, but just because of his bhakti, his intuition and inner attunement to God was flawless and he could tune into wisdom once shown the way. So, that is also the way we can tune into wisdom through inner attunement. One more interesting thing. When Paramahansa Yogananda Ji was asked, can inspiration be drawn at will? He said yes. And the first poem from this verse from eternity came through that uh, conversation. And what he did was he focused his entire concentration at the point between the eyebrows. Now the point between the eyebrows, why is that? It is the seat of will, yes, but it is also the seat of wisdom. And that is where if you focus yourself, you can always attract magnetically wisdom. You have to uh, call out for wisdom from there and then you can receive it too. So, the more your awareness is higher, more your consciousness is higher at the point between the eyebrows, the more it's easier to tune into divine wisdom in everything. And it goes back to the other point. Being here at the Kutastha Chaitanya, we are being away from the medulla, which is the seat of ego and pride. So, in a way, all things come together. And when our energies are not in the senses also, we bring it in, we bring it up, we get to the point between the eyebrows. So again, that takes us to wisdom. We need to be receptive. We need to uh, check what we learn with those who are wiser than us, which is also how we need said in one of the readings, humility. With humility, you can learn more, again, through wisdom. Tuning into the saints, who experienced wisdom and gave it to us is also one way so we can tune into wisdom by reading their teachings, tuning into the truth which they said, we can tune in closer to the truth. So, true wisdom is not just intellectual knowledge, not just words, it's true experience. And what you experience, if you touch a hot uh, cup of tea or milk, you will get burnt and that way you will know what hot feels like too much hot. So that is an experience and that is your wisdom you have gained through experience. So every experience has a lesson, has a wisdom in it if we are open to receiving it and that is the way also. So again before going forward since I have time I would say another story to re-emphasize the same point and it in a humorous way because when you said no, if you say the same thing again and again that doesn't mean we have experienced it. So along the same lines. This story is from the autobiography of a yogi. On an island lived three old hermits. They were so simple that only prayer they used was, we are three, the what three have mercy on us. Great miracles were manifested during this naive prayer. The local bishop came to hear about the three hermits and their inadmissible prayer and decided to visit them in order to teach them canonical invocations. He arrived on the island and told the hermits that their heavenly petition was undignified and taught them many of the customary prayers. The bishop left on the boat and he saw behind, following the ship, were the three hermits running on water with light behind them. And as it approached, they said, We have forgotten the prayers that you taught us and have hastened to ask you to repeat them to us. The bishop said, dear ones, continue your prayers as you have, as you know them. So again, these were simple hermits. They weren't highly advanced yogis. They were highly advanced yogis, but not outwardly. Inwardly, they were simple, but their devotion, their practices were one-pointed. We are three. Our three have mercy on us. Simple, clear, no obstruction of any other thing. And with that, they could tune into divine wisdom without knowing actually what it is. Many saints manifest wisdom without knowing the intellectual breakdowns of the truth. They just state it and they know it. 
Why? Because they receive it and they are a flawless channel for it to come. Uh, that is why uh, Paramahansa Yogananda Ji, when he expressed certain truths, he, need, he needed disciples to edit it so that it had a proper grammatical structure because uh, the truth just flow through him. He didn't follow the laws of reason and logic, which is uh, laborious, laborious. So with the story, I was also going towards what another thing wisdom looks like is clarity. That when do you know you are in tune with divine wisdom is when you have clarity, clarity of the truth and not the illusions. Illusions make us question everything, but when we are really in touch with wisdom, we feel it in our heart that it is the truth and it is not the delusion. Uh, Swami Kriyananda Ji again says a funny story that once a seeker went to a high mountain to a saint and asked him what is the meaning of life and the saint said life is a rainbow and the person said what I came all this way to know life was a stupid rainbow and the saint then looked at him and said so do you say that life is not a rainbow? So the person was not fixed in his wisdom that life was a rainbow, he was wishy-washy. So that is not true wisdom and that is one way we can look within and see, oh, that is not true wisdom. Life may be a rainbow, it may not be a rainbow, but it's a funny story, so a good example. So what, why I was saying that is, we have to be clear in our intuitions because we can be misled and in the beginning it will happen. That's how we learn, but some intuitions will be true and that's how we will know too. A funny example, uh, not a funny one, uh, inspiring example uh, of how once I experienced divine wisdom was after a particularly uh, enlightening, helpful meditation. I was just sitting in, uh, in the after effects and I looked in the room I was and I saw two different places. And both of them were in uh, different shades of light coming from various sources. And the thought came to me that, oh, in this particular shade, it looks way different than I ever known that place to be. And then another inspiration came. I don't know if it is true or not. You guys need to verify it. So what the inspiration said was that that is how our awareness and perception of light makes us see the world in different ways. That the saints see everything as images of light and it's beautiful to them. But those who can't perceive light can only perceive very lesser light in the world in ugly ways. And different people see the same thing in different ways on their own perception of the light. So that was the inspiration, but that came after a particularly deep meditation. When the mind was calm, the senses were, the storm of the senses was stilled, the mind was uh, not distracted, and the thoughts came. So, one way to know wisdom is to keep a calm mind. Another thing, this is also from the Bhagavad Gita, is man of wisdom, a person of true wisdom, is neither elated when things go well or not very unhappy when things go bad, like even mindedness. So again, practicing even mindedness helps with tuning into divine wisdom. So with that, I think we have come to the end of this session.